whole thing that you went over yesterday because we couldn't see very well when you were. <laughs> oh yeah, that might. Well, just stuff up so we could all see it. That might make it easier. All right. Uh, let's go through the blood vessels first, then. All right. Okay. And we start, and this is all in order on your lab objective sheet. We start here with the renal artery, which is bringing blood off the abdominal aorta. This is oxygenated blood. That's also blood high in contaminants, okay? A lot of junk, because it's going to the kidneys to be filtered. First branch is off, which you see here, okay? These would be the segmental arteries. These, yeah. Branching off that, you have a short one here, you can see right here, that's a low bar. Now this isn't shown in your book anymore. They used to show it in the older editions, now they've deleted it, but you can see it right here. It's not in the Shaw Lab Manual either. But this is a low bar. And then coming off that are these, which are interlobar arteries. They're the ones that run here. You can also see them right here. That's an interlobar. That one here? Yes, that'd be an inter, that'd be an interlobar. Here's an interlobar. Okay. So they're kind of going both down around the pyramid. Yeah, so it comes, you know, some of them call us this little short branch called a lobar. Okay. Now from there you go to the arcuate artery, which is this one. You can also see them here. That runs between the cortex and the medulla in an arc. So that's the arcuate artery. Coming off that, almost like a tree trunk, you see it here? These are the interlobular arteries, or as your book calls them, cortical radiate arteries, because they're radiating out into the cortex. What appear to be the branches of the trees here, these are arterioles. These first ones that come off, okay, are afferent arterioles. They're feeding blood into the capillaries inside the renal corpuscle. These, which are the glomerular capillaries, are simply glomerulus. These capillaries are drained, not by a venule, but by another arterial, which is called the efferent arterial. That's what this one is. So coming out this other side here, these are all efferent arterials over here as well. So the one going in is afferent. The yeah, one the one coming, coming off the cortical radiator artery or interlobular artery going in is the afferent, and the one coming out is the efferent. So it's A before E. And the big red one over there is And this the one's always end. bigger, yeah. Okay. What this does is create a pressure head, okay? So it's always going to be more blood coming in than going out, and that creates pressure. That's what forces the fluid across the walls. The so afferent. The afferent's on the right. So on the left, yeah, afferent. this way. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the afferent, the one that's the, the, one the right, right so one that's going right. right. But the thicker okay. one is always, the bigger one here is always the afferent or afferent, okay, and efferent draining. Okay, now the blood from the efferent supplies a set of capillaries here in the cortex called the paratubular capillaries which surround the tubules in the cortex. Para means around. And then right in here. These are the paratubular capillaries. The red one and the blue Well, it's between. Okay, it's between the red and the blue. Okay. So it's the, it's the vessels right here. So if I put a sticker, that'd be the paratubular capillaries. Okay. But the same vessel, you can see, also comes out, and it supplies capillaries here in the medulla. And these are called vasorecta. In the medulla. Yeah, they're, they're the, those would be the capillaries around the loops of Henle. Okay. Vasorecta is not in the sheet, or is it? Vasorecta. Okay. It's there. But both vasorecta and paratubular capillaries are supplied by an efferent arterial. Not the same efferent arterial, but one, one from one and one from another. Okay? Then it's picked up by this from these venules. It goes into the cortical radiate vein, okay? Also called the interlobular vein. And that drains into this, the arcuate vein, which parallels the arcuate artery, except it's in blue. And that goes into this one, which is the interlobular artery, which parallels the interlobular, excuse me, interlobular vein, which parallels the interlobular artery. Okay? And the interlobular vein goes directly into the renal vein. There are no segmental or lobar veins. Okay? So that's really the flow then for that. And you, this you, is the that's, that's, well, that's the ureter. This is the renal vein, the blue oh, okay. and That goes into the inferior vena cava. Yeah. That's bringing blood out of the kidneys, lower in oxygen content, but much cleaner, because it's been filtered right. by the kidneys, okay? All right, as far as tracing the waste products, well, first of all, outer part here, which is lighter, and has these spherical structures, which are renal corpuscles, this is the cortex. And it gives the cortex kind of a granular appearance, you can see, because of the presence of renal corpuscles. 
So look for the renal corpuscles here and on the slides, and if you see renal corpuscles, you'll know you're in the cortex. Okay. Okay. Um, right here is the renal corpuscles. The little round things. Right. Are they all in here, and they're it's just showing you? Yeah, they're, they're not showing the whole thing. Okay. Otherwise, but they're all through it. Okay. Yeah. They're just That's showing a few of the nephrons here. Okay. And then down here, the darker part, which is striated because of all the ducts in it, or tubes, that's the medulla. And because it's shaped like a pyramid, it's called a renal pyramid. But that's how the medulla is arranged, in pyramids. The base of the pyramid, of course, faces outward, it faces the cortex. The apex, or papilla of the pyramid, which is the more pointed part, faces inward, as you can see here. These are all renal pyramids. This is all medulla. Now you have some extensions of the cortex between the renal pyramids, and these are called renal columns. So these are renal columns. Together, yeah, renal column and pyramid makes up what's called a lobe. That's why these are called the interlobar arteries. Okay, because they're running between the lobes. All right. Notice too that the apex or papilla of the renal pyramid projects into a cavity, a collecting chamber, and this is a minor calyx. So there's one minor calyx associated with each renal pyramid. Two or three of these come together into a larger collecting chamber, which is called the major calyx. So here's a minor, here's another minor, here's another one coming in from the plane of a plaque. You can see the edge of that, those are the holes there where the papillae, you know, papillae would be, or papillary ducts, all projecting here, so that'd be a, minor, a major calyx. There'd be another one right in here. The majors come together and they form this large collecting area, which is called the renal pelvis. And that is continuous with the ureter or ureter, which is carrying urine the kidneys to the urinary bladder. Okay. As far as the nephron again, and this shows the nephron here, and there's some over here, but this is more expanded as you can see. We start with the renal corpuscle, which consists of the capillary network, the glomerulus, and then the collecting chamber, which is the Bowman's capsule or glomerular capsule. That's what picks up the fluid coming across the capillary walls and then sends them into the renal tubule. The first part of which you can see coming out here, that's this. That's the proximal convoluted tubule. Okay. Then you go into the loop of Henle, the so-called descending limb, because that's the flow of the fluid, descending from the cortex into the medulla. Then the ascending limb of the loop of Henle, going from the medulla back into the cortex. And then the descent, the distal convoluted tubule, which is this thing right here. And that's the end of the nephron. Then fluid from the distal convoluted tubule, which is now known as urine, goes into collecting ducts. And they collect, like I say, fluid from a number of so the distal color tubules. The big white one is the collecting duct. Well, this is all collecting duct here. When you get down toward the base where collecting ducts are coming together, that's called the papillary duct. And that projects through the renal papilla. As you can see them right here, see the openings? Those are the openings of the papillary ducts into a minor calyx. Okay? Or into a calyx. Pretty much does it in the kidney. Where oh, the here. The what? The renal tubule. Well, the renal tubule is just proximal convoluted tubule, mm -hmm. descending limb and ascending limb of the loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule. That's the renal tubule. It's just oh, parts. that's just the main. Right. These are the parts, parts of the renal tubule. Oh, okay. 